The first time I ever played poker, I won a pair of AirPods. <laughs> so naturally, that's how a poker addiction starts. But I actually became very fascinated with the skill involved in the game, not the luck and the gambling. I've been playing a bit more lately. <gasps> no, what? It's been going well. But of course, I also love programming and computer science. So when we put these two things together, we get a poker bot. And so that is exactly what I did in January. I took a class by MIT called MIT Poker Bots. I spoke to Poker Bots president, Andy Zhu, to ask him about his insights into playing poker and creating poker AIs. You'll hear some of his thoughts throughout this video. This video is inspired by dank memes and big dreams. Now, before I can dive into the nitty gritty details of this algorithm, let me talk about how poker works and why this is such an interesting problem to create a poker bot in the first place. At the start of each round, two people at the table, the small blind and the big blind positions, have to post their blinds. This just means that they have to put a little bit of their money into the center of the table, the pot. It's what the winner takes at the end of a round. Now, after the blinds have been posted, this is just to encourage betting. Every single player at the table gets two cards. These are called the whole cards. And the only person at the table who knows what your whole cards are is you. So in addition to your whole cards, the dealer will eventually deal out five cards in the middle. And these are called the community cards. Everybody sees them, everybody shares them. With these five cards plus the two cards, the total seven cards, you're trying to create the best set of five. There's this ranking of sets of five and you're trying to get the best one possible or make other people think that you have a better ranking than they do. All the players sequentially decide what action they want to take. So the person to the right of the big blind looks at their cards and says either, you know, these are not great cards. I don't want to play them. I don't want to risk anything. And then you can fold your cards and you're out of that round, which means that you don't lose any money, but you also don't win any money. If you decide that your cards are pretty decent and you want to give it a shot, then you can either call what the big blind had posted, so you can put that much money into the pot and now you're in the game, or you can raise. So that means that you want to put even more money in and pressure other people to have to put more money in. Everybody goes around the table and decides what action they want to take. Now, if somebody raised the stakes, that means that everybody else following has to accept those new stakes. Once everybody decides what action to take, the dealer then deals out three cards into the middle. Once again, these cards are cards that everybody can see, and this is called the flop. So now we have updated information, right? We have our two whole cards, plus three cards in the middle. So we already have a set of five and you can already judge, hey, like I think my hand is doing all right or yo, I got the best hand at the table or yikes, uh, well, I don't really have anything at all and I think that no matter what other cards, you know, everybody else has, mine are most likely the worst. With this new information, everybody then bets again. And remember that here you can either fold you can check now, which checking is just saying, hey, like I wanna keep playing, but I don't wanna put any more money in the middle. And if everybody else checks, then we go on to the next round. But you can also raise. And raising is saying, hey, like I wanna make it a little bit more expensive for other people to keep going. I'm gonna put some chips in the middle. And then just as before, everybody else around the table has to accept that new threshold if they wanna continue. And if they don't, they can fold. The dealer then deals out one more card on the table. This is called the turn. And another round of betting happens just like before. Finally, the last card comes down and this is called the river. This is then followed up by yet another round of betting or checking or folding, whatever. If by the very end, two or more people decide, hey, I wanna see what other people's cards are because I believe that I have the best, then the cards get flipped over and whoever has a higher ranking hand takes the entire pot. But also you might notice what's the point of all this betting that happens after every single piece of new information? Well, 
at any point, for example, if I decide to raise by a lot, then maybe every single other person at the table folds their cards, which means that I'm the last person standing and I don't even have to show people my cards in order to reap all the benefits from that pot. The round ends there. I win. I win without even ever like comparing my cards to anybody else's. Why should people play poker? Like, why is poker a great game to learn? So I think everyone should play poker, but poker is an incredibly fun game. It is in some sense gambling. And when you play with money, it's always very, very fun. Um, but the other thing about poker is that you can be good at poker and you can practice being good at poker. Even though it seems like a game of luck when you first play, uh, poker is really, really complicated. And often you run into situations like when the way the cards are dealt, that you have to think really, really hard based off what other people do. And that's a lot of the fun. Mm -hmm. Once it becomes more of an intellectual pursuit with other people, it becomes really enjoyable. A wild part of poker is luck and it is whether or not that one card that you really need comes down at the very end or not. There's also a mathematical and a psychological component to it. Every single time new information comes, you can update your beliefs and you can recalculate certain probabilities. In addition, it takes skill to read your opponent and to exploit your opponent's weaknesses. This is like a huge part of poker because you can win with a bad hand but you can also lose with a really good hand. The reason why I find poker so fascinating is because at the end of the day, it is a game of decision making, just like in life. You know, there is gonna be randomness, but you have to figure out how to do your best given the factors that you can't control. In that sense, it teaches you about probabilities and uncertainties. You are also constantly evaluating evidence, new evidence that's given, and you're changing your mindset, updating your beliefs based on these new pieces of information. If these seem like life skills that you should learn, well, poker teaches them. Okay, Kylie, fine, you've convinced me poker is a great game to learn, but it, it almost feels too human, doesn't it? It feels too human for a computer to play because you're constantly wondering what your opponents are thinking and how you can beat them in their psychology. One big problem here, duh, like computers can't think. Or can they? I, I don't know. How do people code these poker bots and like in, encode this sort of logic in there? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. The things that I'm just like talking about previously, it's like very touchy-feely, oh, I think they have it, oh, I like been in this spot mm -hmm. before because I played a lot. So I guess I'm guessing what they have. While you can't do like this kind of like soft, okay, let me try to figure out what they have. I think they have this uh, and like this kind of logic. What you can do is be like, okay, I've seen this spot before um, as in like the board comes out some way and I have some certain cards in my hand and I've like seen this like these years of actions before. Um, what mm -hmm. was really good the last time I played here and I'm going to do that again because I think that will make me more money. So mm -hmm. Kind of like they can just like there's a huge computational space that bots can just like kind of solve well whereas humans it's like much smaller and there's much much higher level of abstraction it's really interesting to basically like figure out what should be done and then trying to actually implement it in code um such that it like solves some version of the game in essence poker is just this very very big and hard question that you're trying to solve and there's like a bunch of different ways to solve it i know some of the best teams just had like if else bots that played really really well trying to play good poker. Other people use very advanced poker strategies and like use a bunch of game theory and game states. There's just honestly like an infinite number of ways to approach how to solve it. And I think that just makes it super mm -hmm. fun. Well, let's actually think about it in a slightly different way. Instead of asking, how do we incorporate this into our bot? Why don't we ask, is there an optimal strategy to poker that we can code up? It seems like no, because there's luck and psychology and you know, you should pay attention to your opponents, right? We just talked about that. Well, you guys saw this coming, didn't you? There actually is an optimal solution. According to game theory, there is something called a Nash equilibrium for poker, which means that if you play at this Nash equilibrium, you will not lose. Naturally, as an overachiever, I wanted my poker bot to play at near Nash equilibrium. And the algorithm that we're gonna to use to do that is called counterfactual regret minimization. Let's dive into it. 